It's been just over 100 days since I last uploaded, and I needed a break. I wanted to feel re-inspired, and now I do. Uh, in that time I was also suffering an injury that I'm still dealing with, but I'm glad to be back. I'm gonna try to upload more frequently again, going back to my weekly uploads, but I may move the date around from Monday to maybe Wednesday, but more to come on that. For now, let's just dive into the new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cincinnati Bengals Paul Brown Stadium. Although it may seem like a normal, run-of-the-mill NFL stadium, it has a really interesting story. Prior to playing at Paul Brown Stadium or PBS, or the Jungle, the Bengals called Riverfront Stadium home from 1970 to the year 2000, when the new Paul Brown Stadium was finally ready. The stadium sits on 22 acres of land and has a respectable capacity of 65,515. It's also one of three stadiums in the NFL to not be named after a corporate sponsor, with the others being Lambeau Field in Green Bay and Soldier Field in Chicago. Plans for the stadium began in 1996 when Hamilton County voters passed a half percent increase in sales tax to fund the construction of two new stadiums for the Cincinnati Bengals and the MLB's Cincinnati Reds. The two teams had previously co-occupied Riverfront Stadium, but as with many multi-purpose facilities, it was a jack of all trades but a master of none. Ground was broken just west of Riverfront Stadium on April 25, 1998 with a playing cost of only $455 million. That does sound like a lot of money, but it's a bargain when you consider some other modern NFL stadiums are going for north of over $1 billion. Construction took over two years, with Paul Brown Stadium opening to the public on August 19, 2000. Within the first year of the stadium open opening, problems did begin to arise. The natural grass playing surface proved to be of such poor quality that the stadium was ranked as the third worst playing surface in the NFL. By 2004, the stadium had been retrofitted with synthetic turf like most other modern NFL stadiums. A unique feature of this turf is 5 miles of heated piping that run under the field to help keep the rubber inlay heated during those cold Midwest winter months. Other notable features of the stadium include two large video boards in either end zone that were updated to HD screens in 2014. In addition, there is also over 200 feet of ribbon board to keep spectators informed throughout the game. As is common with other modern NFL stadiums, Paul Brown Stadium features 114 private suites and 7,600 club seats accessible to those VIP fans. Although the jungle, as Paul Brown Stadium is known, is well liked by fans, compared to some other NFL stadiums, it's starting to lack. There's been an increase of rumors that the stadium will be soon replaced by a more modern retractable roof stadium, similar to the other Midwest venues like Lucas Oil Stadium. Only time will tell if the stadium, still relatively new at only 22 years old, gets replaced. What I can tell you though is that Paul Brown Stadium joins the archive of everything. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and comment for future video ideas. What stadium do you want to know about next? As always, this is Matt from the Archive of Everything, and I'll see you all real soon, and this time I do mean real soon. Thanks for watching.